All right, well, good morning to you. Good to see you this morning. Don't look so excited. We're starting Sunday school. <laughs> All right, if you'd like to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 22, 1 Samuel 22, it's good to have everybody here that. Uh, Stuck around with us. Glad for all these Sunday school classes where, where everybody has a uh, place and uh, to be able to learn and grow. And so that's very good. I hope you feel like it's worthwhile for getting an hour less of sleep or however long it takes you to, to uh, get going and get to Sunday school. But I hope that uh, everybody feels like they're getting something out of it. And uh, whether it's more nap time uh, for some of you guys, or, or whatever it may be, uh, that you get something out of it. So thank you for making the extra effort this morning and for uh, being here. And uh, always enjoy uh, the masses, uh, the more the merrier. So I'm glad when people avail themselves and are uh, health-wise and everything else, they're able to be here and be under the teaching and the preaching of God's Word. And so uh, so glad to be able to do that. Uh, with you this morning. Uh, we're trying to get some things uh, finished up in the life of David, and uh, we've only been here for the last uh, three years or so, but uh, uh, hasn't been that long. But uh, o- over the course of, of time, we've learned a lot, not just about David, but I think uh, if there is one thing that I've pulled out from these lessons, uh, it's just the fact that and Brother Sexton brought this up in, in uh, one of the studies, is that uh, when you look at David, and you look at the life of David, you're looking at David's God. And we're learning things about God, and everything's directed towards him. And so thankful that the Lord gives us, in these precious pages of his word, uh, gives us some more learning that we can learn about Uh, some more of this teaching, we can learn about the Lord. And so glad that he's put these things. You know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that I'm I'm glad are there for my benefit, uh, good positive things. You know, there's some negative things in there too. Uh, Some of the life stories, some people that uh, you wonder, maybe just at face value, why did the Lord include that? You know, it doesn't look good for that particular person, that event that uh, those things that happen doesn't, doesn't look good, doesn't favor them. And, uh, but God put everything in here for a reason. And we're to learn by other people's mistakes. And uh, what's sad is a lot of times we won't learn from our mistakes. You know, other people are watching us too. And we're being teachers, we're being trainers uh, everywhere we go. Somebody is watching, somebody is seeing uh, you, uh, listening to you, all of these things. And so I encourage you. Uh, you've, you've been saved. Uh, Christ has put on you his robes of righteousness that we live holy because he is holy. And I think all of that is uh, not just a good thing to say, but it's scriptural and the right thing to do. So uh, I'm not perfect. Uh, we all are still trying to, um, striving to do what the Lord would have us to do. And so glad that he has given us his word. He inspired his word. He's now preserved his word for us. And we can glean some things. We'll try to do that again uh, in this time that we have this morning. So let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and ask for some uh, understanding, some uh, discernment, some direction uh, this morning. Heavenly Father, do thank you so much for being good to us. You are so good. You are so gracious. You are a prime example of what love is and what love should be. And the world needs that. The world has a, a love, they think. Uh, a lot of us here, we, we sometimes think we know some things about love, but, but you are love. And uh, we can love you because you first loved us. And so you teach us things from your word. You teach us things by your attributes And I'm so thankful for that, that we can learn from you. We're going to learn some today about a captain, and the people need a captain. And we're looking at the the life of David and how that uh, he became a captain to many, many people. And uh, it was all your doings, and uh, David was not perfect either. But you helped him along. You helped him to grow 
You helped him to be faithful to you. And we see his, his ups and his downs, things that we can learn by. Please help us to be a holy people because you are holy. Uh, you deserve nothing less from us than holiness and righteousness. Thank you for those robes of righteousness which Lord Jesus Christ has placed upon us, upon uh, our salvation in, in Christ. And so thank you for saving us, loving us, being so gracious and merciful to us. Please help us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. All right, I mentioned quite some time we've been in the, in the life of David, and we've seen how that God chose a young shepherd to be a king. And uh, we, we wouldn't think that, uh, you know, when you think about somebody that's going to be in leadership in, some, in, a, in a, such a high place, that it would be somebody that is all uh, learned and uh, he's, uh, you know, highest IQs, uh, uh, just many, many different things. Uh, God took a lowly shepherd boy and he helped to grow him. He helped him be strong in his faith. He helped him to be a leader and to one day be a king. And remember how Samuel came, the, the man of God came to anoint David. And, and Samuel didn't know it was going to be David. He didn't know who exactly it was going to except for the house of Jesse. And to, it would be one of his sons. Uh, but it wasn't the oldest. It wasn't maybe the best looking unless David was the best looking. Uh, you know, maybe a lot of things that people would go through. As, oh, it's definitely it's going to be him because of this, this, and this. But why did God choose the shepherd boy David? Because of his heart. That's right. God chose a man after his own heart, and he found that in David. And so we've got to uh, uh, take care of some things in our lives to, so that our, our hearts would be better. Uh, I want to be uh, fessed up, I guess you would say it in the South, but I want to be fessed up uh, with the Lord. I want to confess my faults uh, to him. Uh, he knows about them already, but uh, I want him to know that I'm on the same page with him, that, that the Holy Spirit is indeed doing the work in my life, uh, convicting me of sin. Um, when I got saved, it did not mean that I wasn't going to sin anymore. I still have faults. Uh, you didn't hear that, Mama. But uh, I, I still have faults, and please don't ask Mama about, about any of those. Uh, but we all do. We get saved, and the Lord wipes the slate clean, and he saves us from those past sins, those present sins, those future sins. Uh, but we still fall short many, many, many times of the glory of God. And that's why we needed salvation in the first place, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we look at David knowing that uh, he wasn't a perfect person, but God used him in a very uh, special way. And it amazes me how, how the Lord can take little things. He took a shepherd, and God can take little things and make so much of the small and of the little and what our great God can do for that. You think about it even in the book of Genesis, in the beginning God, and we think about God's creation. What did he do? He, he took things from over here and over here and molded. No, he spoke things into existence. Let there be light. And what? There was light, right? I got you. Okay. All right. He says, and uh, let the, the, uh, be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And, and that happened. Let the waters be gathered together. Let the dry land appear. All these things. And, and, it was, and God said, and God said, not God made these things. He took his hands and what was already there or what somebody else had done. No, God spoke these things into existence. And I trust that. A lot of people don't. I uh, wonder about some, some people that uh, uh, push God farther and farther away and say things evolved and this and that. And that. Well, how, where did those things come from? And, and there's no real explanation as far as people trying to explain things away. But the Bible says repeatedly in the book of Genesis, and God said, and God said, and God said, and I like this, and it was so. The words of God. And God said, and it was so. You know, it's a lot different from what Tom may say. Tom may say some things, and it never happens. But when God said it, it happened. 
and, and it was so, and I, I love him for that. Um, uh, we're going to hold your finger in 1 Samuel 22 if you've uh, turned there. Look at uh, Psalm 121 with me. We'll look at a couple of Psalms. I do like to go to the Psalms. Uh, much encouragement, much to learn in the Psalm. Psalm 121 and verses uh, 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. We can trust the Lord. We can go to him for help. Oh, the vast resources and the vast might that he has. And uh, as he spoke those worlds and, and, and made things and put things in order. Psalm 126, starting verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. I'm glad for the things that God does for us, aren't you? I very much am. Both of us are, okay. No, I know you are. You, you are glad for the things that God does for you. And he does things for us again and again and again. In uh, 1 Samuel 12, verse 24, Samuel said to Israel, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth and uh, with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. And I'm so glad that, uh, that our God does so much for us. And I don't gravitate to him just to see what I can get out of him next. But our God is a gracious and a very giving God. And, uh, and I come to him for just who he is and for all his attributes and who, who he is. And I thank him for that. Is it a big thing for you to serve a mighty big God? It should be. It should be a big thing. You should uh, consider uh, your service uh, for the Lord to be your utmost, um, your, what you want to attain. I'm grasping for, for words here, but we serve a mighty big God. And it's good to, to serve him. The prophet Samuel anointed David to be king over Israel. And it wasn't at that time that he was king, but he would be the future king. And God had to grow David. And uh, from time to time, uh, uh, David's anointing uh, was, was seen uh, by his family. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, there was a lot of things, a lot of trials, a lot of things that came up in David's life until he would actually reign. We talked about uh, that school, being in the classroom of the king, and the things that he would learn, not just under Saul, but under the Lord, and uh, being in those classrooms. And we consider ourselves as being students in the classroom of the Lord, that we learn things from God's Word. We learn things from life. Learn things from what he uh, brings us into, uh, and he's always walking with us. Uh, we, co we come into trials, we come into hard times, and the Lord's right there. He never leaves us nor forsakes us, and so glad for that. Uh, many people think of that when they're going through trials. There's, no, there's no, uh, thing, nothing that really happens uh, of that. There's no real rhyme or reason and all these things, and they miss out. You know, we go through some hard times and we don't consider what God's doing in our lives. I think we really miss out on a lot of blessings. And, uh, and a lot of people do that. We all, I believe we all do that from time to time. And God does things in our lives uh, to strengthen us. And I'm glad for what Dr. Sexton uh, used to say that uh, a person doesn't live life day to day, a, a Christian I mean, most people you would think live day, I'm living day to day. No, we live from strength to strength. Pastor talked this morning already about those victories, that we can have victory in the, in the Lord. And that's how a, the Christian life should be lived, from strength to strength. And we have struggles, we have low times, we have times of defeat, uh, but the Lord's always right there to, to carry us through and to be our, our deliverer. And uh, to redeem us from those things. First Samuel 22, I promised you we'd be there. Uh, verses 1 through 4 uh, is our text. And we'll look at a couple of these verses as we have time this morning. Uh, 22 and 1 of 1 Samuel. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. 
and everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. David was on the run, wasn't he, with his life from King Saul. King Saul wanted David out of the way. King Saul wanted Jonathan to to rise up and be the next king. And as far as the kings of the uh, heathen uh, people, and that's what Israel kind of looked to uh, as they asked for a king, uh, those, there would be a secession. And uh, Saul was looking for his family to, to be six, the successors uh, in that kingly line. But God had other plans. And as we mentioned, that God knew that David was a man after his own heart. And so uh, whatever Saul tried to do, tried to put into motion, tried to kill David. It wasn't going to happen because uh, God had already promised that, uh, that reign to, to David. And so Saul couldn't do anything. He tried, uh, but those, uh, those things were just defeats uh, time and time again uh, to King Saul. And so, uh, uh, you know, the world tries to get us down, don't they? They try to, try to make it so that we can't succeed uh, for the Lord. And uh, as David said, is there not a cause? As those other Israelites were on that side in the Valley of Elah, where the battle would be fought with uh, the giant Goliath and against the Philistines, David said, is there not a cause? And he would, uh, we looked at it uh, earlier that he was going to be a champion for God. He was going to be a champion for the people. At this uh, cave, Adullam, people gravitated to David, and he became a captain over them. The people needed a captain. And who were these people that gravitated to David? Who were the ones that sought for his leadership? And, and by the way, what a strange man to follow and, and want to lead somebody that was being sought out to be killed because Saul had armies at his disposal. So anybody that was around David was a target too. But there were people that sought leadership and the right kind of leadership. I imagine King Saul could have been one of the, the greatest men of all time. He could have been one of the greatest kings and, and history could have, could have really had some very flowery words for him and some mighty words for him. But he had that evil spirit. He had that spirit that uh, my will and not your will, Lord. And many, many times, again and again and again, trying to do things his way instead of God's way. Things could have been a lot different. If we were writing the story, that's how we would want it to be, right? Uh, but King Saul, he had his own agenda and everything else. But the people that gravitated to David were those people, the down and outers. They were the ones that were distressed. They were the ones that were in debt. They were the ones that were discontent. And these are the men that gravitated to David. They needed a captain. They needed someone to step forward and champion the cause. And they wanted to be a help in that uh, cause, I believe. And they gravitated to David. And God raised up a mighty army from these men. Uh, it's good to read about the, uh, the mighty men, some of those that, uh, uh, that were uh, with David, uh, the uh, 30 that uh, the Bible talks about, the mighty men uh, there and the exploits there, things that we just could not imagine. Seems like fairy tales, all the, the exploits, but it's truth and it's history and the things that really happen. David is often a, a picture, a type of Jesus Christ, and people should gravitate to Jesus Christ. We can find a captain in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, who are those people like, like us? People that are at times distressed, maybe people that are indebted, maybe people that are discontented. And we're the kind of people that gravitate to the Lord. You know, people are looking for something. People in this world, they're looking for something. But where do they look to? The world has so much out there for them to see. And so in that sight life, 
they gravitate to this thing, they gravitate to that thing, whatever the world wants to hand them, whatever the world has to offer. But there's no peace in those things. You know, and uh, all the wickedness of the world, there's no, no peace there. It's, it's like the, the troubled sea that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the winds blow and the waves are restless and the, the, uh, all the seafloor, all that, it's all this wishy-washy, all that stuff washing along. That's how the, the wickedness, and uh, there's no, there's no uh, good standing, there's no peace there. And so uh, these people gravitated around David. People of the world need a captain, they, they actually need us to point them to Jesus Christ. People don't know just naturally where to look. We have the Word of God. We have Jesus Christ as Savior. We have the Holy Spirit to be our guide. People need to know that they can trust Jesus Christ. So with our first point in these few minutes that we have, let's look at some things here about the captain and his family, the captain and his family. Look back with me at 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, the account here, and I don't believe this to be a fairy tale. I believe this actually happened. There was a, a giant, Goliath of Gath, and he came to defy the armies of Israel, and not just them, but to defy the God of Israel. Forty days he came and he taunted the Israelites. He taunted those men that when they saw him coming down to that valley of Elah, they, they fled and they'd go to the caves and they'd hide out behind rocks. And for 40 days, he, this man did this. Let's look at uh, 1 Samuel 17, the captain and his family. And let's look at the first three verses. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoko and Azekah in Ephes Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. There was a valley between them. Look at verse uh, 10 and 11. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. You know, those people that were dismayed should have been mighty men for the cause of Christ, for the cause of God, for, for the things that the Lord would, would be valiant in and be victorious in. But they were afraid. They were dismayed and greatly afraid, the Bible says. Look with me at verses 20 through 24. And David rose up early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took and went, as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench, as the host was going forth to the fight, and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the, army, uh, the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold... Uh, there came up the champion, the, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Here's David, and he's going to check on his brothers as Jesse had sent him with uh, some bread, some cheese, uh, some vittles there, a uh, little care package from home. And uh, he goes to, to find out how, how things are going. And surely God's army is being victorious. Surely the Philistines are being put to flight. Surely the Lord reigns and the Lord is, is uh, uh, got this thing because God's people are there. And they're being victorious uh, in the Lord. And he's going and he shouts for the battle. He's excited. He's, uh, that we're moving on. We're going against the, the Philistines. We got this thing. We're, we got this thing in the, in the bag because the Lord's with us. And what does he find? Here comes the giant. Oh, man, yes, yes, we're going to be victorious. Hey, where's everybody going? Hey, hey, the battle's over here. And the people fled from the battle. They were dismayed. They couldn't have the victory because they ran from the battle. You know, we would like to have no battles, right? We're not fighting people for the most part. We don't like to fight. Uh, we, we would just as soon uh, be at peace and everything else. But we see battles, and we sometimes find ourselves in, in battles. 
Lord wants to be victorious for us. And um, I, I was trying earlier to remember there's a saying that uh, a victory is, is not the absence of, uh, of a battle or a conflict. It's the triumph over it. And I know that's probably not the quote uh, Dr. Fugit uses time and time again. Uh, I have to go and search that out again. But it's something like that. And so victory doesn't come just because there's no battle. Victory comes when there's a triumph in that battle. And the Lord wants us to be triumphant people. He wants us to be victorious people. And uh, we can definitely do that just in the strength of the Lord. Look with me at 1 Samuel 17 still. Verses 32, 33. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. And he had man of war from his youth. I've written a little note in my Bible right beside that verse. Don't discourage the young people from Christian service. King Saul looked on that outward appearance, didn't he? Of the young man. And he said, you, you can't go. There, there's nothing you can do. You're, you're just a youth. You're just a young person. This, this guy, he's been a, a warrior from his youth. What, what are you going to do? Sometimes people count us out as, as Christians. They count us out. You're one of those Christians, right? What, what are you going to do? What, I mean, you, there's nothing about you that says victory. And sometimes that's all people see. No victories, and, and we're defeated time and time again. This world needs a captain, and this world needs to see that Christians can be victorious because our God is victorious. It's good to give God the victory, give Him the glory. And we can't do that if we're running off and hiding. I mean, don't, don't go looking for trouble. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, Brother Tom, in his, uh, in his teaching in his Sunday school, he told us, go looking for trouble. Go start a fight. No, that's not what I'm saying. But when trouble comes, you can have a victory. Whatever this thing is, that we, we, the next thing we walk into and we're faced with, the Lord can give us victory. Struggles, uh, temptations, whatever the, the devil, the, all those fiery darts, all those wicked things, those tricks that he's got up his sleeve for us. We can be victorious. We can't do it by ourselves. We have an ultimate captain that can help us out to be victorious. Look at verses uh, 41 and following here. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, but for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone stu sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword, drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah rose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until they come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sherem, uh, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. 
Can I put you on this verse right here? Verse 53, it says, And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. Where had they been to start with? The ones that were chasing the Philistines, where were they before? They were back there behind the rocks. They were in the caves. They were hiding where there was no victory. They weren't facing those struggles to be victorious. They ran, and they let their, that uh, adversary, and they let that adversity rule them, put them in their place, and their place was in trembling, and their place was in the caves and behind the rocks. And God had something that he wanted to do, and he wanted to show not just Goliath, what does the verse say in verse 46 that David said that, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel? The people need a champion. They found that in David. They knew that he had been victorious for the Lord over this giant Goliath. And these people that were distressed, these people that were indebted, these people that were discontented, gravitated to this champion this captain named David. But he was just a, a, a simple little shepherd. Yes, he was. God helped him and God grew him. Uh, he was the one that, was, that came out of his family. The, uh, can I remind you about what happened at the anointing of David? Where was David when, when Samuel came to anoint a new king over Israel? David had not even been invited to the party, Right? David was out being obedient to his father. He was with the sheep. He was taking care of the work that the father had for him. The other people were right there at the house or within reach of the house there. All the sons. And the Bible says that Samuel went through each one. Surely the Lord's anointed. God says, no, wait a minute. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God knew David's heart, and, and, and David wasn't hiding away from being a king. David wasn't hiding away from, oh, one of these other brothers. He had to be invited to the thing. And this simple little shepherd boy would be a king and be a mighty king. Oh, the exploits of David and, and all the things that God brought him through and those victories. David needed those brothers that were passed up for that particular service to be on his side. And we see that all these people that gravitated to David, who else came along with David? His family did. And his family came to him so that he could be a captain. They appreciated what David had done already in his life. They probably were sad about David having to be on the run from King Saul. Maybe they feared for their lives, and David feared for their lives. What would Saul do? If Saul can't get to me, he's going to get to my family and try to draw me back in. I don't know what the whole situation was, but his family rallied around David. There's so much more to be said, and for time's sake, we won't be able to go there right now, but the people needed a captain. Maybe the people need you to be a captain for them, whatever it may be. And you say, well, I'm just, I'm simple. I'm a simple person. Uh, maybe I don't have much means. Uh, maybe I'm not the smartest person, the brightest uh, crayon in the box, whatever you might say. Uh, but the people need a captain. They need somebody that's consistent and it's going to step forward and, and say, is there not a cause? Knowing that there is a cause. There's a cause for the, for the battle. There's a cause to be victorious for, and that's the cause of the Lord. And we can be victorious. We can't do that if we're in hiding. As we face those battles, we have to ask for God's strength. As we face trials and temptations, we have to ask, have to ask for the Lord Jesus Christ for his, for his help and his strength so that we can have a victory and we can give him the victory. We can be glorified in that victory so we can give him the glory and all things point towards Christ I'm glad for the study of David I'm glad that we can learn more about our our precious Lord so much more uh, even uh, with with this the the captain and his family but the people need a captain we've got to be more of a captain to, to people people need the Lord we've got to point them to Lord Jesus Christ 
And uh, with that, let's close things out uh, in, in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you so much for your leading us. Thank you for being our ultimate captain, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've brought us through, the struggles, the battles. Uh, thank you for the victories that you've given to life. And maybe there's some things, dear Lord, that we're just hanging on. We're, we're hoping for a victory over something just at any moment now. And uh, maybe this, your timing is not right now. We want things so much in an instance, but sometimes, dear Lord, you have things for us to learn. Uh, there's a purpose for everything under the sun. And we trust that you know what's best. We trust that your timing is best. We thank you for those struggles, the adversities, uh, those trials and tribulations that come our way. May we be uh, like a captain and be victorious and give you all the honor and glory. As people look to us for answers, people look to us to see our testimony uh, throughout our struggles, throughout our battles and our strifes, uh, that we still cling to you, dear Lord, and we know that you are faithful. May we remain faithful to you. May our faith not be wavering, and may we not be double-minded people and unstable in all our ways, but may we fully trust you and be humbled before you, dear Lord, as our ultimate captain. Thank you so much for uh, the life of David that you have given to us to learn thereby. Please continue to save the lost, encourage the, the ones that are down. Uh, just encourage our hearts today and help us to learn more of thee. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.